Alrighty. Hi everyone, hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm Chandler Garrison, the Vice President of National Panhellenic Council, and I'm also a member of the Epsilon Mu chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated at the University of North Texas. Um, so we're gonna get into the National Panhellenic Council. Let me see if I can share my screen. Cool. Can y'all see? Cool. So National Panhellenic Council is the um, historically black uh, sororities and fraternities, also known as the Divine Nine. And here is a list of all of the wonderful um, sororities and fraternities that are a part of our council. We currently have eight active of the nine. Um, yes. So what we do um, on campus here, we have a National Panhellenic um, Council week that we do pretty much every semester um, in the fall. I believe our week is the fourth week um, of school. That's when it usually falls. And then we have campus-wide events, like you see the Let's Talk About Sickle Cell, the Black Professional Networking uh, event that we hosted with also other Black organizations we have here on campus. Um, and we had an MPAC cookout. Um, and then this is also a flyer of our MPHC week that we had um, the last fall. We do a lot of community service because all of our councils, uh, all of our, uh, well, yes, all of our councils and all of our chapters are very big on community service and being a part of our community and, and being uplifting and helping in any and all ways that we can. And then we do fundraising events within our chapters and within NPHC um, to raise money for um, our orgs or raise money for the community. So membership, membership for each organization is very um, discreet. And we usually what you do is you do your research, you figure out which organization best aligns with your morals, your beliefs, um, and then you go into that organization. Uh, you do your research, very important to do your research, and then you follow those pages and go to their events um, and just show yourself to be interested and then you follow through with their process. Usually we all have a rush. We all um, host events to get to know um, interest in so in that. So how to stay in the know. So we have a Twitter and an Instagram. It is UNT and PHC for both um, accounts. Um, I would follow these so you can stay up to date on what we're doing, um, what types of events we're hosting. And so you can keep in the note of what we're what we're doing, and you can follow each chapter through in UNT and PHC. Um, you can follow us and go through. And I would say follow one specific organization that you are most interested in that you've done your research on, um, and then turn on their notifications so you know when that specific chapter is having events, what um, what they're up to, and when they'll be having a line sorts of things like that. Um, so that's pretty much it. For that, uh, I'm open to questions. Oh, I do not know how to get back to the screen. One of the uh, questions that we have is uh, how do you sign up or, or join? Um, so like I said, it is very specific for each organization. I would say follow their social medias and just keep go to their events. And then usually we post like flyers around campus to let you know when that time has come um, to be able to uh, start the process of joining an organization. Uh, most of our chapters, it is up to our national when we do um, start a process of bringing in uh, new members. So I would just say, follow everyone's page, do your research and just be ready when it ever happens um, and just keep up to date on all the events. I would say it's very, very important to go to our events so you can show face and just show that you're interested and show that you're, um, that you're really ready to do, to join an organization. Okay, um, I was wondering if I could feel this next question, which is, is membership open to freshmen? Mm. Okay, that answer to that um, is that, of course, it's not. Uh, there are requirements for each of the organizations. Um, 
I can go ahead and go through them all with you. Um, let's go ahead and go with the fraternities, if that is something that you're looking at. Um, we have <clears throat> Alpha Phi Alpha at the University of North Texas is 24 credit hours, UNT credit hours. We have, um, excuse me, um, Omega, Psi, Omega Psi Phi, which is 30 credit hours, UNT credit hours. We have Phi Beta Sigma, which is 12 credit hours, UNT credit hours. And we have Iota Phi Theta, which is also 12 credit hours. And for the sororities, we have Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, who has 12 credit hours. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Delta Sigma Theta, who has 24 credit hours. Um, we have Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, which has 12 credit hours, and as well as Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated is 12 credit hours. Um, the reason that we, as a whole, do not allow people to uh, join as freshmen, it's not to say, oh yeah, you know what, you, you ain't ready, nothing like that. It's actually to allow people to go ahead and have a chance to go ahead and go to school first, figure out if this is something that they can add on as a, another responsibility, because of course, um, Joining an organization in whatever council is not supposed to take away from your collegiate experience. It's supposed to enhance your collegiate experience. So the thing is that that's why each one of the organizations gives a chance to do so. It gives you a chance to uh, go ahead and collect any monies that need to be done, uh, do any community services, meet people, you know, so that's what we get to do during that time. So do not think that there's not anything for you to do during that freshman year. Um, like I said, that's the time for you to go ahead and network with people, make different, make the monies that you need to, and do all the other requirements that you may need to do during that time. Um, Chandler, the next question that I have is um, with the virus going on, how are you guys getting creative with hosting events since the campus is closed? So I know for some of our chapters, we started doing virtual programming, um, like for, my sorority, we um, had a virtual workout um, thing that we did on our Instagram Live. And then we've just been talking about um, how this transition is going to be, like how we're going to practice social distancing within the events that, we, um, that we're going to try and host this fall. And just kind of staying up to date on the codes and safe practices that we need to maintain um, to be able to host those events. But Push come to shove, virtual programming will be probably the most um, reliable thing if we can't like get back to school and get back to being in person and having those large groups because our priority is everyone's safety first and foremost. Um, so it's still kind of in the process of working out, working itself out to figure out because no one really knows what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna try and make sure whatever we do is safe and most efficient and we can still give people the same interactions that we were in the previous semesters and maintain that status on campus of hosting events and doing things and getting people involved on the campus. Okay. Um, another question is, uh, when do we know there's an interest meeting and do they also post on WorkSync? It's different for every organization. Um, some post flyers around campus, some post on the National Panhellenic Council, uh, their social medias. Um, so like I said earlier, it's just really important to follow um, the organization, follow the NPHC page and just stay up to date um, with what we're doing, going to those events, um, whether that's virtual or in person, just making sure you're being present in there so you don't miss out on any of that information because like I said, it's different for every organization. Um, if I may piggyback off of that, um, one of the things that is important is um, a lot of people will just go to social media instead of going into the different places. Um, that is not what, um, it's not recommended. Let me do that. Um, one thing that I was able to do last semester, for example, with Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was that they allowed me to go ahead and post it on WorkSync, as you spoke about earlier um, for this question. Um, the, um, but that was something that had to be provided to me by um, the national office. 
Um, and so they gave me the ability to do that. Now there's an, there was something on WorkSync where it was just for people inside of the university. That's why it's not on the World Wide Web because then that means everybody can see it and to join the different organizations, it simply is you know, um, that institution where you can join. And so the thing is that it is detrimental for it to be on the World Wide Web in comparison to just, you know, OrgSync, which only goes to UNT students. So of course, you know, like as, as Chandler said earlier, you want to go ahead and make those connections. Also, you know, just go ahead and look out. And I can truthfully say, look at it at all times. A lot of people just look out, you know, for a little while. Remember, most people have a window, 14 days or whatever else. So the thing is that if you don't check it out, definitely in the beginning of the semester, um, for the first, you know, couple weeks, um, you may miss the boat. And I mean, I feel bad whenever I talk to people about that. So, I mean, all I could say is just make sure that you continue to call in. And to call in to the Center for Fraternity Story Life, that's not a problem. Call in all the time and we will tell you if it's up, if there's a posting or if there's not. There we go. Um, my next question, um, I would actually also like to field this one really quickly. Um, are there 24 credit hours uh, specific to Delta Sigma Theta? Yes, for Delta Sigma Theta and Alpha Phi Alpha for the University of North Texas. Um, that is what that is. So, I mean, I provided all those different, those different things. If you would like for me to provide those at a different time, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and also look at our um, Center for Fraternity Sorority Life page on the UNT site. Hopefully we have those, that information there. And if not, once again, check our different social medias and ask that question once again. Now asking you once again, Chandler. Um, so a person's transferring in. They have a question, um, if they are transferring in, are they able to join? Yes. Um, the only thing is, is as I, again, is different for each um, chapter. I know for Alpha Kappa Alpha, um, we, you have to have a certain amount of UNT credits. So um, I would just say, look it up or at like you can reach out um, and see what each person each chapter's um, requirements are but you could definitely transfer in and then be able to join an organization it, um, yeah we don't discriminate against transfers yes okay um, and actually I have a couple of different questions about specific organizations so thank you guys very much for asking those mm -hmm. um, once again as Chandler said a little while ago make sure that you go ahead and look at what each organization desires not only nationally but also locally, for example, a person can go ahead and look up, um, for example, I'll go ahead with um, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Nationally, it says 12 credit hours, but at University of North Texas, it's 24 credit hours. All organizations can always go above the requirement, cannot go below the national requirement, if that makes sense. If not, once again, feel free to ask a question and, um, I will be, I will do my best to answer or we can ask any of the people who are on the call right now. Okay, going back to you, Chandler. Another question I have is how many community services, uh, community service hours are needed to be obtained? Again, different for each organization. I would say go ahead and do as much as possible. Um, but again, being, looking those uh, numbers up or reaching out to the um, center and seeing what those specific things are would be really good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's different for every organization. That's pretty much going to be the answer for all of these questions. Um, but yeah, and each handle that differently. Um, like some, it may be a requirement to have a set hours and some it just may need to be known that you are doing community service. So I would just really say do research and, um, and as Kari was saying, make sure you're looking not only at the national level of what they require, but also um, the local, because as they said, we, we can require more, just not less, you know? Yes. Um, I apologize, I actually missed something. Um, so if Sydney Smith, if you would like to go ahead and unmute yourself and also show your video, um, yeah. go ahead and answer the, the question of for the transfer, if you'd like, please. It was actually for Chandler because she's under my name. Oh, okay. Uh, my apologies. Well, oh, it does say your name. That's crazy. Oh, 
because you have my link from the email. It's okay. I got you, sis. Uh, <laughs> I did want to answer on it only because Please. I'm a transfer student. So, like Chandler said, that um, you do have to have a certain amount of hours from UNT. I did want to answer the bottom. Someone asked about a freshman. Kari, correct me if I'm wrong. Where um, as long as you have a semester of UNT credits, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to join. So, yeah, join yeah. or show interest. Um, I am also a transfer student, so I would just make sure that you go through at least one semester. Make sure that you're staying full time, 12 hours or more, and that you're keeping your grades up. Right. Um, absolutely, Doug. Sydney is absolutely right that, um, of course, you know, you, you, you can go ahead and inquire at any time, but the actual membership portion um, does have those different requirements for different organizations. Um, uh, like I said earlier, it's um, 12, if I'm just going with sororities, it's 12 credit hours for Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, um, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, and Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, or Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, it's 24 credit hours. Um, for Alpha Phi Alpha, it is 24 credit hours. For Omega Psi Phi, it's, it's 30 credit hours. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And for Phi Beta Sigma, it's 12 credit hours, as well as it is for Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. It's, it's 12 credit hours. Thank you very much. Um, so um, once again, either or um, Sydney or Chandler. Um, actually, let's go ahead with Sydney on this one. Um, what is the average amount you pay? Um, different sororities and fraternities uh, require different amounts of payment. I would mm -hmm. just make sure that you're saving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Am I allowed to give a, an estimated amount? Um, actually, you, you feel free to, you can go ahead and give a... Um, a ballpark. Yeah, a ballpark figure, you know, in between this and this. I would say, I would at least just for... Kind of like a safety net, I would have at least three thousand saved. Okay. Yeah. So I would. Yeah. I I agree with that. So I would go ahead and go from um, fifteen hundred to three thousand. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and it's hard to say which it, what exactly it is. I know that's a big big gap in there. But the thing is, as as it was stated earlier, each one of the eight organizations that we do have at University of North Texas is different and do have those different um, monetary requirements. Right. So the thing is that what we're kind of getting to everything, and this is this goes with absolutely anything that you're looking for. Most things are not free. That's the thing. So of course, once again, during that time, if you do have that 12 credit hours or whatever it is that you cannot join for that time, that is actually a perfect time that for month to month, you can go ahead and say you're going to go ahead and save $2,000. You can go ahead and each month go ahead and save like $120 for each month for, for those 12, for those, let's go ahead and say for, if it's a year, for those 12 months, you can go ahead and do that and you can make it up that way. Or if it's six months, you can figure that out. All right. Um, so that was answered. Um, the next question that I see is, how would one say one is particular, particularly doesn't live on campus or frequent campus a lot to see flyers or physical information for, for interest meetings? How could they go about getting that information? I know some, not all of the orgs, don't usually post things for interest meetings on their social medias. Um, so again, attending those events, following us on social media, just making sure you're doing as much as you can as possible. Like um, we usually, everyone usually posts well in advance when they have events. Um, and even if you don't see it on the individual chapters page, MPHC usually posts it on their page. So you're, we give enough advance for you to know when we are having events. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much the best way to go about that is going to events or following us on social media and just making sure you're, because, I mean, you're going to be on campus. You have to go to classes and stuff. So you, you won't be it, – it won't be that bad. I don't, I don't want you to be too worried about that because you'll see it. If you're being active as you should, then you will see. Sure. Wonderful. Um, and this actually can go to you two women on the call. Um, 
because this deals with one specific thing. If a freshman completes 12 hours in the fall and AKA has a rush event in the spring, would a freshman be eligible to join or participate in rush? Yes, as long as you fulfill all the requirements, the necessary hours, the necessary community service, the necessary, like all of those boxes have been checked then you're good to go. Even honestly, even if you haven't checked those boxes, you will still, you may still participate, but moving forward would be the question of whether you checked all those boxes or not. Okay. Wonderful. So um, actually we have for our session, we do have approximately 13 minutes or so left, mm -hmm. um, or actually, let me, excuse me, I, I apologize. We have nine minutes left. Um, so. Are there any other questions? Um, feel free to ask them. There's one more. Yes. Okay. Ah, there we go. Um, please interact during social media. Um, interact with events. Come to events. Please talk to us. Um, feel free that if you have any questions, please ask us. We're not. We're not mean. Um, but definitely interact during social media. I know that when we had to kind of socially interact through social media. We wanted people to tell us, you know, how they were staying safe, um, what they were doing at home, whether it was working out, um, reading, you know, just to give us ideas of what other people can do. So definitely interact with us. Okay, cool. Um, and once again, either of you ladies would like to answer um, how much community service is required for Alpha Capital Alpha Sorority Incorporated? There's not a set number of hours per se. Um, we just would like to see that you are involved on campus because that is one of our, like, that is our, that is what we do. We are, we love to serve us all. So that's just something I would say, do as much as you can of. Um, and there's not a specific number, but the more the better. Uh, Actually, can, can Yossi also get on this one? Well, I thought Yossi was on. Oh. Yeah, he's, there he is. Oh, What's okay. up, guys? How you doing? All right, so I got a question for you. Do the NPHC organizations have residential halls, houses on campus for their members? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, my fault. It's raining. I think the Wi-Fi is really messed up. Oh, okay. Um, so the question is, do NPHC organizations have houses? No. Um, especially with us, I mean, uh, I mean, it's possible for you to like live with people in the same uh, fraternity as you as well. Like, for example, uh, me and my uh, LBs, uh, we plan on staying together, but in terms of having like an actual house just for that, our school does not have one. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Chandler, mm -hmm. what would be a good way to get more involved on campus? Uh, perfect person to ask. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I, there are so, like we have over 400 organizations on campus and it is easy to create your own organization. It is very easy to get involved. Um, so our hub for organizations is OrgSync. So just go on Google, type in UNT OrgSync, and there's a search engine, there's different categories, and you can just go through that and kind of search through and see like what these organizations are about and what would fit you. Um, we also have a service where you can um, go to like a sort of org counseling and they can, you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them and it's like an hour long and they tell you what types of, um, they ask you questions like, well, what are your interests? What did you do in high school? What types of things are you interested in and like to do? Um, or like, what's your career field that you're joining or your major? Um, and they list out a whole bunch of different organizations that fit um, and that can cater to you and help you grow. Um, so that's another resource. And then going to these events, University Program Council we have on campus, um, they partner with a lot of different organizations on campus. So going to those events and being exposed to the different organizations on campus through that. Um, I don't know how this will go, 
but we have something called mean green fling um, and that happens in both semesters um, and that's just a huge huge event where a lot of the um, more active organizations come out and table that's where you can approach them you can talk to them ask them questions um, so I would definitely be on the lookout for that um, event I don't know how we're going to do that in the fall but I know probably by the spring we'll have it figured out um, uh, but yeah and just following different every organization has a Twitter um, student activities has a Twitter and an Instagram uh, campus there's a lot of different um social media things that you can follow and they'll keep you updated i know for sure unt underscore upc go ahead and follow them because they are full of events um but yeah so it's it's really easy and then to start your own organization all you need is seven friends um a constitution and an advisor and really all you need is seven friends who want to do the same thing you do because the school provides the advisor and the constitution so yeah Okay, um, let me see how many minutes we have. We, we have a couple minutes, two minutes. Um, does AKA have any events coming up? Stay tuned. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, follow us at UNT underscore AKA, or is it AKA underscore UNT? No, we need to post a notice. Let me check that real quick for you. UNT underscore AKAs. Um, but I would just follow us, turn on notifications, and we'll let you know. As of right now, there are none in person, especially since we're going into the summertime. Um, but we probably will start doing virtual events and things like that. But when school does start up, we do have big things happening for y'all. So those are all the, no, let me see. I think those are all of the questions so far. Let me see. Let me see the ARs, can be obtained, the online student. What do you know about Rush? I think those are it. I think you answered everything. Oh, there's another question. Oh, another question came in, huh? It's the membership. Hmm. That's up to corporate. Yes. Corporate um, all those decisions. So oh, let's I, saw, saw, go ahead. Huh? I saw one. I think you answered it. It says, how do you know if you're accepted? Yes. Yes. Like, so that's that's all. I, it's just a letter, right? I I provided an answer real fast about that because uh, I wasn't sure if we were going to make it to there. Mm -hmm. Basically, all it was was uh, I just put down that um, each organization they go ahead and they have their meetings and everything, and then after that, you are let known whether you have been accepted to continue on with membership or not. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. I believe that's it. Yay. So if you'd like to close us out, Gemma. Yes. Well, thank you all for asking your questions. And please be sure to follow us on social media. If you don't follow anything, follow UNT NPHC on Twitter and Instagram. Turn on notifications so you're up to date on everything. And we hope to see you around. Please interact with us. We love new people on campus. And we want to be able to have fun with you guys. So, yeah.